Good night, wise guy. Wake up, Lynchboro. Lynch Kozak's coming to town. Get up! Ah! Back off! I'll beat your damn heads in. Am I gonna find out something you don't want me to know? Probably. He's a cop. He was the best backup I ever had. You want to get back into uniform? Welcome to the sheriff's office, deputy. Right, Everybody, well. this is Kozak. They bought it. You're inside. I feel like Barney Fife here. Give me a call, Barney. <laughs> so long, Frank. <laughs> You're late, McPike. I was reading your composition, Corbridge. Do you know that pizza costs $25 in this town? That's why I had you pick it up, Frank. So what's the big news story you have for me? This is a collection of articles published by small newspapers across the country. Take a look at page 26. One man, no vote. Lynchboro, Washington. It's a company town. And the company's run by one man. Hmm. Volchek? They say here, old man Volchek? Yeah, an old man Volchek has run things there for nearly a hundred years. Lynchboro's a throwback. Right out of the Wild West. There's mining, there's logging, and there's prostitution and gambling. Jack, this is a small time generations of people living in feudal times. A small pocket of the Middle Ages right here in America. Yeah, the hell with them. Well, listen, I have to have some other reason than these people are stupid enough to live under this guy's thumb. What's the mob, Frank? <laughs> there are four officers on the sheriff's department. There used to be six. They lost two men because of an accident. Yeah, come on. This is not exactly the hotbed of organized crime. Yeah, of course not. Most of these people are Polish. If they were Italians, the OCB would be organizing a task force. You know, doesn't your self-righteousness get enough exercise on the opinion page? You're spoiling my I'm appetite. Publish it. Sunday magazine cover story in six weeks. You know what happens then? One of the major networks picks it up, and somebody I'm supposed to report to wonders why we haven't. But it's too late. Because old man Volchek's pulled in his horns until the heat dies down. He's worth probably about a quarter of a billion dollars. Now, how many capo de tutti capos can you say that about? A quarter of a billion. Well. Wake up, Lynchboro. Lynch Kozak's coming to town.
whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, fella, you need, need a hand? Yeah, I sure do. Uh, put it by the uh, cash register for me, will you? Sure thing. How you doing? Excuse me. Morning. Know what you want? Hi. Yeah, I know what I want, uh, Vivian. But in the meantime, I'll have uh, three scrambled, uh, double order bacon, uh, order toast, and glass of milk, OK? Hey, Vivian. Morning, Rogo. Hey, where are you headed? Edmonton. Oh, you go right by Waterville. Yeah. Would you mind doing me another favor? What's that? Drop off a stack of papers for me. Oh, well, I don't know if I have hey, come time. Come on, it's at Lange's. It's that convenience store right on the right. You go right by there. Hold on. Look, they're all in a bundle. All you gotta do is just drop them out the window. Rogo, don't annoy my customers. I'm not just talking to the man. No, it's all right, it's all right. Hey, thanks for the refill. Somebody's out at your truck. Call the cops. Hey! Get away from there. This is my rig! Not anymore. Hey! Hey, guys! Come on! Come on! Stay back! Get back! back. Just get away from the rig! This is my rig! It is the property of the Union Sovereign Bank, Pittsburgh, PA. Now step away from that door before I do something I don't want to do. You're out of state! You're out of luck! Step back! the man with the shotgun, Donnie. What's going on here? My name's Vince Kozak, Sheriff. These guys are trying to steal my rig. We've got the proper documents to exercise a repossession. Hey, I'm just trying to earn a living here. Rogo, I suppose you want to give an unbiased viewpoint too, huh? Rogo says these three men here, they're thieves. I don't care what kind of documents they have. Check the clipboard, Sheriff. Look, I got to do 10,000 miles a month to stay even. I was short a couple months, that's all. You signed a contract. You got to live up to it, deadbeat. Shut up. Whose sedan is that? It's the bank's. We work for the bank. I didn't ask you who you work for. Donnie, cuff these two men together and have uh, Big Mouth drive you to the station. That arm and that arm. You, you come with me. Let's go. Go. Hey, hold out your hand. Hold out your hand. I got my personal stuff in there. Shut up. Don't let him take my personal stuff. Okay. Let's 
pretty old picture. Where are you from, Kozak? Potonic, Pennsylvania. Well, I'm sorry, but they are within their rights. You know how many Polacks it takes to drive an 18-wheeler? Just one. To pay his bills. Oh! Kozak. Donnie, put him in the cell. Put him in. Come on. Donnie, let him take the rig and its haul, but uh, not Mr. Kozak's personal belongings. We're authorized to take the rig and the contents within. Bring back his belongings. Yes, sir. Come on, boys. Sorry for all the trouble. Me too. You're in some dire straits. Yeah, I guess so. Well, thanks for not letting those bastards take my stuff. How long are you gonna hold me here? I gotta run a check on you. Why? Why don't you just let me go? I'll grab a bus out of here. Isn't it bad enough I lost my rig? You got any money? What do you mean? Well, there's no cash in here. No credit cards. Let me see. Let me see. What do I got here? Got, uh, what? 10, 20. Got $35. How do you pay for diesel? Got a gas card from the shipper in the cab. Well, I guess the repo men get the gas card now. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you just drop me off at the bus station? You can do that. You got no reason to hold me here. You're a vagrant. I think I better run a check on you. Am I gonna find out something you don't want me to know? You mind? No. You want one? No, thanks. Thanks. Kozak, am I gonna find out something about you you don't want me to know? I don't know, Sheriff. Probably. Kozak. Well, maybe Mr. Kozak doesn't want to be interviewed. Mr. Kozak? Yeah. I'm Ed Rogoshevsky. I publish the Lynchboro Times. Lynchboro trash. Can I interview you? Why? Why not? Look, I just lost my business. I don't feel like having it announced to the world. How'd you lose it? To the bank. Where else? How many payments were you behind? Just a couple of months. I was just coming out of a slump, too. They don't care. No, they don't care. Tonic, please. Hold, please. I'm sorry, he's not in right now. May I transfer? Operator, may I help you? Hold on. Tonic, please. Your chief there. Chief Burroughs? Who shall I say is calling? Sheriff Matthew Stemkowski, Lynchboro, Washington Sheriff's Department. On. One moment. Yeah. A hey, Sheriff Stemkowski is calling? Yeah, all right, put him through. Yes, sir, here's your call. It's Chief Burrow speaking. Chief, this is Sheriff Stemkowski, Lynchboro, Washington. What can I do for you, Sheriff? I'm running a check on a guy we're holding here, and it came up on the computer that I should call you. Yeah, who is it? Vincent M. Kozak. Oh, no, is he all right? 
Well, physically, he's fine. But... <sighs> Thank God. Old Cozy. What kind of trouble's he in? He got his rig repoed. I can't call up a sheet on him. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a good enough reason for that. He's a cop. He used to be, anyway. He was the best backup I ever had. Why isn't he on the force, if he's so great? Hang on. Let me close my door. Yeah. We got this candy-ass mayor. Lady. Real freak for the so-called uh, rights of the accused. Yeah. Uh, Kozak, well, he's pretty quick to be firm. We have some trouble with the college kid down here. Nah, in my book, Kozak took care of business. But a couple of these kids, university football types. Well, they got daddies with influence. You know about that, don't you? Oh, yeah. These punks jumped him. He beat the hell out of them with his bare hands. But Daddy had connections, so Kozak had to go. Ah, what a great cop. Oh, I mean, he had a small problem being too easy with the local hooker population. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth, we only got two, and Cozy was into, uh... Personal rehabilitation, if you know what I'm saying. Now, uh, you need bail money. Uh, no, um... I know that the boy doesn't have his own. He spent his free time at the track just a little more than he should have. I'll send you the money. No, I just needed to make sure he wasn't a serial killer or something, you know? <laughs> a serial killer. That is funny. Hey, you tell him to give me a call, all right? Yeah, will do. Yeah, well, I'll talk to you later. I got your stuff. This is all of it, right? Yeah, thanks a lot. Donnie. What's he got in there? Old clothes, shaving kit, bunch of homemade cassettes, not much. Say, Stem, the old man wants me to go over to the bank lunch. What about Red? Well, the old man sent him and Jeff down to Seattle to pick up a Corvette. Who <sighs> was working for who? I'll go to the bank. Somebody gave me a Corvette, I'd find a way to get it myself. Garslava. Mark, uh, listen, uh, this fellow just got dumped in our laps. What were you hauling? Corduroy. Corduroy? Yeah, bolts of corduroy. See, non-perishables are the best haul. It was a cash job, too. So you know what they did with it? That's all for now, Rogo. I got it right. This is police business. You can talk to him later. Don't be a pain, Rogo. You want me to get you a lawyer? No, I'm sure the uh, sheriff will be fair with me. I know a lawyer. He doesn't need a lawyer. I am trying to help him out. So leave us alone. I'll be back, Vince. I'll be back. It's not like you're on death row. Want coffee? Soda? I want my rig back. It's long gone. Well, in that case, I guess I'll take a coffee. The deputy just left is Donnie Volvec. I got two others, Red, Jeff Boyd. I'm Matthew Stemkowski. Vince Kozak. Friends call me Stem. Cozy. You talked to Chief Burroughs, didn't you? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry to put you through all the trouble. God, I hate thinking about that. It was another time. <sighs> Bitch, Mayor. I kept my town safe, Sheriff. It wasn't enough. The mayor wanted us to be poster boys for the ACLU. Doesn't work that way here. We don't have a mayor. 
Got a city manager and a town council. Sooner or later, nearly everyone serves on it. Most trouble we've had this week is you and the repo man. You uh, miss police work. I don't miss the politics. No politics here. <laughs> right. It's true. We operate by the golden rule. Just as long as what you do doesn't hurt anyone, it's fine. That's the way the old man wants it. We take care of each other. Two of our men got lost out on river, taken down by a mud wash during a storm. You got a problem with gambling? No. Just not very good at it. What about women? Chief Burroughs talks too much. Is there a problem with the ladies? Well, never had one complain. <laughs> well, Lynchborough could put that to the test. Yeah. Do you plan on holding me long? No, I'm planning on seeing if you might want to stay voluntarily. We need some help here. I lost my best men. Donnie, Red, Jeff, they're good boys, but they're boys. I need some experience here. You want to get back into uniform? We'll give this a try for a few weeks. If you're happy and uh, I'm happy, well, maybe you found yourself a new home. If I got to take an oath or something? You swear to do what I tell you? I swear. You've taken the oath. <laughs> Welcome to the sheriff's office, deputy. Well, not yet. I hope this is OK. That's a very thoughtful thing. And you look pretty good in uniform. Thank you. I hope this place is clean at short notice. I don't think anybody has been here since, uh, since Claxton died. Oh, man. What, do you die in this room? <sighs> you noticed. Oh, I'll fix that later. Rent's included with the job. What a deal. So when am I on the clock? Over to Garslava. I saw a crawl on a dog. Right now. Uh, who was that? Uh, the old man. Well, who's crawl? Uh, Sardonicus's butler. It's uh, some damn horror movie the old man's watching all the time. Donnie, you listening? Yes, Tim, what's up? The old man wants me at the house. Meet me at the drive. You know how a radar gun works? Sure do. Good. We have two major businesses here, Volchek Logging, Volchek Mining. By some chance, well, it's not gonna happen, but uh, if a problem crops up at either place, your job, keep things calm until I can get there. If you don't get me, you have to get the old man. Hit the recall button, hit number one, then punch send. You get Mr. Volchek. Got it. This is the Volchek place here. All right, it's all yours. 
As much you do, you go about a mile up the road, you'll see a welcome to Lynchboro sign set up a speed trap. All right. We try not to hurt our neighbors, but a lot of out-of-towners use this road. Uh, what you uh, collect directly, you uh, get an override on. In a good week, you make an extra hundred bucks. All right. Is there a quota or anything? Well, let's just see how you do. Oh, yeah, the old man, he's a prince, but uh, he is the boss. So when he comes flying down the road in his funny little car, just wave, OK? All right. What kind of funny little car? I don't know. I can't pronounce it. But I think it's Italian for money. Go, Donnie. Driving bikes in weather like this? Oh. Gotta be out of your mind. I'm gonna grow old and retire in this uniform before I make any progress here. What, you've been in town a day, you nailed down the job? You're moving like lightning. By the way, you really screwed Myerson's leg up when you kicked him. Guess I got a little carried away convincing these people my livelihood was being taken away by repo men. When they bought it, you're inside. Yeah, and I'm running a speed trap. I can't shake down people just to maintain my cover. I have no idea how to get close to Volchek. I feel like Barney Fife here. Well, give it a couple days. That was Volchek. You get a good look at him? Did I get a good look at him? You see how he flew by? I saw a cap. And he had teeth. Come on, give me some money. Why? What for? Well, I got to shake down somebody. Ah. Uh, you take half my advance? I'm sitting eating cheese crackers in a roadside motel 60 miles from nowhere, waiting for the cellular to ring. Yeah, well, my apartment still stinks from the guy who died in it. Oh, you know, ever since we started working together, through the yachts, the private jets, the limousines, I have wished, nay prayed, that once, just once, Vincent, you would experience undercover work as I have known it. <laughs> what I have gotten is satisfaction. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> well, give me a call, Barney. Go on, Frank. <laughs> Why, you miserable. <sighs> <sighs> Jail cell's better than this place. Drawing down on him with a 12 gauge, right? Get away from the rig, get away from the rig. You know? And Kozak's standing there with nothing but a Louisville slugger. <laughs> hey, there he is! Come here. Everybody, this is Kozak! How you doing, boy? Cozy, I'm Max. How you doing, Max? Welcome to Lynchboro. Thank you. What'll it be? Well, how about a burger and a beer? You can get a sausage and beer. Well, I'll be fine. Vince, uh, that's red. Hi. Hey, Red. And uh, this is Jeff there, the other two deputies. Hey, you're, you're a real headbanger. Yeah, well. We're going to love having someone on the force we can learn from. Well, I don't know, Red. I might be a bad example, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you fit right in. Thank you, Mr. Kozak. I talked to your old chief. 
You like to beat up on college kids? Ah, oh, come on, bro. You really had me going with that work at class martyr crap. You're a fascist. And water seeks its own level. So you'll grow old and die here. Give me some slack, will you, Rogo? That's all right, Max. It's all right. Rogo here obviously knows my whole life story. You know, I don't know too much, but I do know one thing. I've been around enough of these guys to know that a good reporter is a bad citizen. When was the last time you wrote something good about this town? My job is to report the problems of the town. A lot easier to tear down and to build up, ain't it? Well, you go ahead. You be a sourpuss, Rogo. Makes a stink in my apartment smell sweet. <laughs> Stem put him up in Claxton's place. <laughs> Vince. Sausage and beer. Well, thanks, Max. What do I owe you? On the voucher? Vince, sheriff's deputies get $100 a month credit at the treetop. That's the way the old man wants it. But don't use it for gambling. Was well, that normal? Yeah, yeah. That came a big tip. All right. Max, put it on the voucher. He's going to kill her. Please. Where? The Corvette Club. mother out here. I say I got your mother. Yeah, right. All right, bring him to the office. Red, go get my car. You have to take the kid and put him in the cell in the office. Come on, move. Well, man, is gonna like this. Just keep moving. You all right? Thank you. from him pulling on my hair. I'm really nervous. I know. I know. Everyone is the first time. All the girls at F Corvettes got him from the old man. Sharice is getting hers tonight. Oh, yeah? Uh, trial by fire for you tonight, huh, Cozy? Yeah, you can say that again, Stem. Here. Get uh, speed trap revenue. Well, that's pretty good. Thanks. Put it in the book, Donnie. Yes, sir. See that? All beautiful again. A little lipstick powder and paint. Well, Stem, we're running very late. I know. Getting your vet tonight, Cherise? Yes, sir. Your new deputy sure knows how to handle himself, Stan. Come on, honey, let's go. Have a good time. Bye bye.
Bobby, you all right? Yes, sir. Bobby, you're not in high school anymore. Neither you or Sharice. She's 18. She makes up her mind. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. It's hard growing up. Yes, sir. You gonna be any more trouble? No, sir. Come here. I don't think this is such a good idea. He'll be fine. Yeah, but he's holding a lot inside. He'll be fine. This kind of thing happens all the time. Especially with the high school jocks. It's a real shock for them to step into the real world. Yeah. No trouble, Bobby? No, sir. I don't know about this. Ah, uh, he'll be fine. Uh, you had a good first day. Yeah, well, if you don't mind, I could use some sleep. No. Good night, cozy. Thanks, Tim. Donnie? Be disturbed. Are you making progress? Perhaps. I saw Krull and a dog. You'll see many such dogs before I'm finished, Baron. Doctor, are you preparing a cure or a poison? Sometimes they're one and the oh. same thing. I warn you that if Prepare you do not succeed, warnings, don't frighten me anymore. Down, Bobby. Ah, what a charming tableau. Sir Robert. Yes. Krull informs me that today a dog seemed to survive your injection. Krull is a reliable informant. Then the extract of the poisonous plant has been... What's going on? He was gonna shoot you. I'm with the Lynchboro County Sheriff's Office. I know who you are. Were you going to shoot me, Bobby? Yes, sir. Well, get him out of here. Get rid of him. Sir? You've done too little already. You've let him on my property right up to my door with a rifle! If you want to keep your job, you will get him out of here. Get rid of him. Come on! Yes, sir. Period. 
Let's go, out. Move. Come on. Whoa. In the back. Whoa. No, 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 no. Go on, get in there. Watch whoa, your head. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right, come on, come on. What are you doing? The kid's Bobby Lambert. He's 18 years old. Now, his high school sweetheart just got initiated into the Corvette Club. That's a local brothel. Volchek gives Corvettes to all the new girls if he wants to try them out. Bobby tried to kill Volchek tonight. Well, why are you giving them to me? Because Volchek told me to get rid of him. What am I going to do with him? Look, he thinks you're going to kill him. He'll be relieved just to be interrogated. Okay, now, you put him in a safe house, you do whatever you want to do. You just keep him out of Lynchboro. Why? What, 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 what are you going to do? I'm going to get close to Volchek, and I don't have a lot of time. I don't want to die, mister. Oh, stop. You're not going to die. I'm going to die from earning a living like this. I need to see Mr. Holchek. Well, where is he? What's happening to her? Who's in there with her? Poor girl. Perhaps it was a shock seeing him for the first time. My reminder of earthly greed and mortality. My nemesis. My demon. My, my father, whose grave I defiled. Damn you, Sardonicus. Damn you to eternal hell. You have no decency in you, no, no human, human feeling. feeling. As usual, Sir Robert. I love this movie. You have to watch it. Mr. Sardonicus. Is Bobby put away safe where he can't bother me? Oh, yeah. He won't bother you anymore. What's this? Bobby. Bobby what? There's Bobby. He told me to get rid of him. You mean that's Bobby? You killed him? Hey, he wanted me to take care of him. I took care of him. And he's dead right there in that pot? Right here, Mr. Volchek. I wanted him put away from me. I didn't mean this risk. But you took initiative. That's good, Kozak. I need men to take the initiative. Yes, sir. You want to bring that thing with you? You betcha. Just bury it in another county tonight. And I'm going to call Lacey and double up on your free visits. Mm. I like initiative. And tonight, this thing, it's just between you and me. All right. Next time. If we have a next time, let's be very specific about words, about what words mean. I mean, to get rid of somebody means to me to remove them from my personal space. 
to you would obviously mean something different. Mm -hmm. Let's say if I want somebody to no longer be here as in the expiration of their mortal existence. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You mean dead. Shh, shh, shh. We won't use that word. The word we'll use is, uh, Marek. If I say to you, we'll let Marek handle this, it'll mean, you know, like Bobby. Marek. Marek. It's a name in the movie. Ah. You'll come and watch it. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Deputy. Okay, Kosa. okay. And, uh, no more Merrick. Yeah. The old man, huh? I'm gonna have fun taking you down. Thank you.